Thank you for joining us live from Fresh Meadows, New York for an early season clash between CHSAA rivals St. Francis Prep and Bishop Lachlan out of Brooklyn, two of the best teams in New York State a year ago. St. Francis lost two all-league performers off of their Brooklyn Queens championship squad, but still boasts plenty of talent, led by the best shooter in the Catholic League and Josh Pascarelli. Bishop Lachlan comes in confident with one of New York City's top backcourts and aspirations of their first city title since 1992. It's Terriers and Lions right now on the Varsity Media Sports Network. I'm Gavin Shaw, and this game is brought to you by MassBeth General Savings. And let's take a look at our impact player. First for the road team, Bishop Lachlan, the Lions. One of the two stars of their backcourt is Ja'Kai Sanders, a six foot three junior guard, a top 10 scorer in the CHSAA a season ago. The only other sophomore, none other than Cardinal Hazy and Jackson, you know, the number two player in America in the class of 2024. Pretty good company. Also made third team all CHSAA a year ago has interest from St. John's and Fordham and is going to be a load for St. Francis prep to deal with. But luckily for the Terriers, they have a heck of a gunner in their own right. It's Josh Pascarelli, the senior guard who put up 14 points per game a year ago. Arguably the best shooter in the Catholic League. His head coach, Jimmy Lynch, certainly thinks so. Coming off an impressive start to his season, 20 points in the second game of the year against St. Mary's, a Maris commit. Second team all CHSAA this, uh, last season, excuse me. He has wide shoulders to fill with Latique Briscoe having graduated a year ago in addition to Jaden Daughtry, two first team performers a year ago and all three key cogs in one of the Terriers' best seasons in recent school history as they went 22 and three before ultimately losing in the semifinals to Cardinal Hayes last season. And let's take a look at the starters for Bishop Lachlan, who come into this game 1-0, an 80-57 victory over Holy Cross to start off the year. A big game coming up on Friday against Christ the King, but they cannot look ahead. It's Chris Jeffrey, Ja'Kai Sanders in the backcourt. Jeffrey, a heck of a talent in his own right. Tysir Rahman, another guard. And then Wilmer De La Rosa out of the Dominican Republic who had a heck of a first game for Bishop Lachlan. 14 points and 16 rebounds in his high school debut. And then of course, big Micaiah Moore, six foot eight senior forward manning the paint for the Lions. And then on the other side of things, St. Francis Prep. We already told you about Pascarelli, but his backcourt mate, Veer Anthony, one of the better leaders Jimmy Lynch has ever coached, just a sophomore, but took the reins of this team from his first day on campus and never looked back. Nigel Moore, the next man up as a sophomore, had a big game this weekend, scoring 14 points against Stevenson in his high school debut. Tyler Michelle and Hao Chen round out the front court. Chen just six foot five, going to have to contend with the six foot eight. Micaiah Moore will be one of our pivotal matchups to watch in this one. So we will step aside on the Varsity Media Sports Network. When we return, tip off here from St. Francis Prep. Big opener in the Catholic League coming up next. You're watching the V Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. St. Francis Prep prepares young men and women for the world of tomorrow by immersing them in the Franciscan tradition's four golden links, intellectual, social, spiritual, and physical. 
facilities that are second to none, teachers who inspect for the individual, community, and environment. High school is four years, St. Francis Prep. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. For the best action shots and the best angles, look no further than Varsity Media. Our experienced photographers capture your athlete's best moments right from field level. Plus, we offer great keepsakes like bobbleheads, posters, plaques, and prints. For more information about Varsity Media's photography services, contact us at 516-403-2050 or visit us online at varsitymedia.net. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Varsity Media covers every sport at every level from every angle. Game film, recruiting videos, highlight videos, sports casts, Thunder, what a look. Photography, live streaming. You name it, well, we offer it. Don't leave your video needs to amateurs. Trust the pros. Contact us at 516-403-2050 or visit us online at varsitymedia.net. And we are back at St. Francis Prep High School, about to get underway. Bishop Lachlan in the purple and gold Lakers colors, if, if that's your thing. And St. Francis Prep in the white, red, and navy blue. Our officials today, Tom St. John, Arthur Walker, Steve Razicher. Keys to the game for both sides. For Bishop Lachlan, it, it, was, it was emphasized that they have to contend with the Terriers shooting and be aware of the fact that St. Francis Prep likes to take charges defensively. And talking to Ed Gonzalez and other members of the Lions staff, it was, it was noted that they don't want to look ahead in this game. And, and on one hand, that's a tricky thing to do, right, when you, when you take on the team that beat you in the Brooklyn Queens championship game a year ago, but they have that game against Christ the King on Friday. That is the perennial name to know in Catholic League basketball. And the Lions want to make sure they're ready. Got here a little bit late, just about 40 minutes before tip-off. Long commute, rainy day. They want to make sure the vibes are right. And then for St. Francis Prep, it was emphasized by head coach Jimmy Lynch in his sixth season. Really just about slowing down that backcourt to Kai Sanders and Chris Jeffrey. Really so versatile as a guard can defend one through five. He's massively improved his jumper over this offseason. So he is certainly someone to watch out for. Again, the Terriers are coached by Jimmy Lynch the 2022 Catholic League AA Coach of the Year. Just the third head coach in the school's history, which is pretty incredible considering St. Francis Prep has been around since the 19th century. And then for Bishop Lachlan, it's Ed Gonzalez in his 13th season. He had 254 career wins, which is fifth active head coaches in the CHSAA. Last season, Bishop Lachlan got off to a slow start, just four and nine, had an extremely inexperienced roster, just one player in, in the now graduated Christian Joe who previously had varsity experience, but they had some confidence because six of those nine losses came by five points or less, ended up finishing 15 and 11, eventually losing to Stepanak on the other side of the bracket of St. Francis Prep. And again, when these two teams met for a Brooklyn Queens championship year ago it was a 21 point win for the Terriers so some revenge on the minds of Ja'Kai Sanders and Chris Jeffrey and for St. Francis Prep you know there's a little chip on the shoulder there's something to prove can we do it without Latique Briscoe can we do it without Jaden Daughtry Chance Morish 
We are about to find out as we get underway here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. And we are underway. St. Francis starts off with the basketball. It's Veer Anthony who took a collision upon catching it. Anthony looks for Pascarelli. They're trying to post up Pascarelli more this year, but the loose ball is scrammed by Tysi Rahman. So we'll get our initial look at this Bishop Lachlan offense with Chris Jeffrey running point. Jeffrey fumbling the basketball. Again, these two teams have played a combined three games, but none with this level of intensity. St. Francis, we noted, an 80-30 win over Stevenson and then 80-34 over St. Mary's. Two laughers, and then for Bishop Lachlan, it was a comfortable 80-57 victory over Holy Cross. Chen swings to Anthony. Pascarelli will line up the tray. Rebound contested for inside and won by Jeffrey. Pushing the other way is Sanders. Sanders, a little pull-up pop in and out. Bounded by Moore. Quick attack for Tyler Michelle. And William De La Rose first game. Turning the corner. Dump off pass. Off the mark. And a collision inside. Trying to take the charge was Chen. But instead Raman. And shoot free throws. First one down for Raman, one of the best shooters on this team. Also a talented soccer player. Beloved by his teammates. A big jokester, apparently. And he gets the Lions off to a 2-0 lead. So a surprise starter for Bishop Lachlan. It's Kamar Pierre, the 6'5", junior forward. Pascarelli cans the triple. So a quick answer to wake up this home crowd. Raman hounded by Nigel Moore. Moore a fantastic defender for a younger player. Pressured is Sanders. Outlet is Jeffrey. Raman, high archer, bounded by Pascarelli. In attack mode, it's Moore. Dump off Anthony. He's worked on that jumper all offseason, not that time. We were told pregame by Ed Gonzalez we could start anyone on any given night. And tonight, or rather this afternoon, that's Kamar Pierre. Jeffrey. Pull up pop. And that's big for Hao Chen. He is going to be relied on for rebounding, typically against players much bigger than he is as Veer Anthony gets his first bucket of Catholic League play his sophomore season. They talk about Veer Anthony in reverential terms inside this St. Francis prep program. He came in as a freshman, first day of practice, started doing push-ups, started doing sprints, jumping ropes, and all the seniors were kind of looking at him and saying, is this guy serious? <laughs> it's the first day. McPherson can shoot. Little iffy with the ball in his first touch. Sanders, window shopping. Ja'Kai Sanders, 14 points per game over the course of the last season, over 15 in Catholic League play. Again, that was a top 10 mark in the Catholic League. Only other sophomore to be in the top 10 was, of course, Ian Jackson. Pascarelli, nice patience, and he'll shoot too. Again, that's an emphasis this year for Jimmy Lynch. Pascarelli, such a good shooter. They want to get him the easiest shots in the game in free throws as much as possible, going to post him up a little bit more this year. And he put on a lot of good muscle over the offseason, up to 6'3", 185 pounds. And some functional athleticism that will show up in his ability to dunk the basketball as well.
St. Francis was the number one ranked team in New York City most of last season. Inside to Moore, Moore, his first touch of the game and an easy lay over Chen. Three inches in that matchup. Chen will look to make him pay on the other end. Corner Trey wasn't meant to be. In traffic, it's Moore. Swing to Anthony. Pascarelli, Chen, little floater, nice touch for Hao Chen. And a timeout taken this time by St. Francis as they trail by one here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. So a look at that last play as Anthony caught the ball, giving up a lot of height, but nice little slip pass to Chen. Anthony averaging right around five assists on the season. A nice bit of patience that time from the freshman. So let's look back at the last meeting between these two teams. Again, 68-49 to in that Brooklyn Queens title game. Latique Briscoe, who's now playing at St. Rose College, leading the way with 22 points and four boards. Jaden Daughtry, a monster outing with 18 and 13. He's a Marist commit. Again, Josh Pascarelli will follow him there. A year from now, chance that has Michelle, a junior, far more prepared for this season. As that ball's nearly picked, and now it is Veer Anthony. Widely considered one of the best defensive guards in New York City. Makes the easy pass. Moore looking to pay it off. He does. Terriers back up in front. Sanders with the defense leaning his way. Creates the easy triple for McPherson. Moore winding down the court. A long-range try for the big freshman in Osman Asako. Asako can do that. Stands at 6 foot 7, 210 pounds, out of Far Rockaway. And, and certainly not your typical big. Can play inside, can play outside, can really pass the basketball. Easily the highest upside of anyone on this team, according to head coach Jimmy Lynch. Anthony a little too casual there. Probably should have been a backcourt. And then committing the foul was De La Rosa as he was trying to slow down more. So with 1.16 to go in this first quarter. A two-point lead for the Terriers in this back-and-forth affair. Anthony calls for a screen. Sacco inside, Pascarelli off balance on the shot. Jeffrey, look at that speed, but he's denied. Sacco chased him down, and on the other end to pay it off is Pascarelli. <laughs> Safe to say they're happy to have basketball back in Fresh Meadows. Jeffrey intercepted by Anthony. Anthony to Pascarelli. Two in a row, you bet! Pascarelli rocking the rim. Sanders hoping for a quick response. Rebound in and out of the hands of Moore. Terriers on the loose. And off the mark was Michelle. Second try from Moore. Moore gets it again. Fouled inside. Unruh from the St. Francis Prep Terriers. goes against Wilmer De La Rosa, his second in the early going here at St. Francis Prep. First free throw goes down for Moore, getting his first action as is Jacob Wang for St. Francis Prep and into the game for the Lions. It's Lamont Anderson, a six foot three junior guard who has been playing out of his mind of late according to head coach Ed Gonzalez. Ja'Kai Sanders taking a seat and getting a talking to from the remainder of this Lions coaching staff. 
Final second of the half, or rather quarter, Rahman does not get it off in time. And that's the end of quarter number one. As we get another look at that from Josh Pascarelli. An eight point lead for St. Francis Prep. We'll be back in just a sec on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Sheets to Dancing Under the Stars. Your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for early points, including two big time jams and Osmana Sako who came into the game and changed the tenor just a freshman number 32 and White had that massive rejection on Chris Jeffrey not a lot of floor balance right now for Bishop Lachlan as the Terriers have done a nice job shading their defense towards the core threats as Anderson was denied again by Sacco, his second block in right around five minutes. Power ball for Jeffrey. Kept out of the paint. McPherson and the shot from Moore. Off the mark, Raymond pushing ahead. Moore will turn it into a shot. Moore's had a couple of good looks and hasn't had great luck with the rim. Quick turn by McPherson. Slip inside, Moore traveled. Call made by official Steve Rassiter that time. Nolan Raymond, a junior out of Queens Village, New York. Running the point, number two in white. Anthony slips it in. Pascarelli, and too long that time for Sacco. Jeffrey ahead of steam the other way, challenging the big freshman, and one! Chris Jeffrey getting a little revenge. What Veer Anthony is to St. Francis Prep. Chris Jeffrey is to Bishop Lachlan. As we take another look here, fantastic body control, keeping that elbow out and baiting the big freshman into an early foul. Jeffrey described as special head coach Ed Gonzalez saying he keeps our team together in more ways than one. He is our heart. Anthony double teamed. Michelle eats up the gap. Anthony, oh what an athletic tip by Pascarelli. His head was at the rim. Man, oh man, Josh Pascarelli looking like a different level of player early this season. Jeffrey can't answer. Gets it back. Second try. Third attempt. Stripped inside. Emerging from the pack is Raymond. Pascarelli feeling it. Anthony off his foot and bounded by Ford Okehi. Oh, what a move. Sanders dancing on him, but committing the offensive foul as the charge was taken by Pascarelli. So first foul against Ja'Kai Sanders, fourth team foul against Bishop Lachlan. St. Francis Prep will shoot free throws on the seventh. Pao Chen back in for the Terriers. As Osmano Saka, Osmano Sako, excuse me, takes a seat. After a nice seven minute stretch. And that'll be a backcourt violation off the foot of Tyler Michelle. Seen St. Francis Prep be a little sloppy on those dribble handoffs, have otherwise run good offense.
Ford Okehi, the junior point guard, will throw it in. Jeffrey had it picked by Anthony. Was Anthony able to knock it off of him? No, his foot was out of bounds. 5.51 to go in the second. Third game of the season for St. Francis Prep. Second for Bishop Lachlan. Both undefeated. Quick move from Sanders. Sanders hacked on his way to the rack. First foul of the game against Fear Anthony. Sanders getting interest from Fordham and St. John's. Again, just a junior. A three-level scorer. Tremendously improved as a jump shooter from last season to this season. And wants to take on more of a responsibility defensively this year. Knowing that at the next level, there won't be anywhere to hide on that end of the floor. Aiden Torres, who had a good game a year ago against St. Francis Prep, will check in. Was one of the last guys off the bench, came in unexpectedly and scored 10 points. Pascarelli unselfish. Patience from Michelle. And rebound in traffic for Sanders. Jeffrey, tough adjustment, just barely avoiding the travel, and it's paid off by Okehi. Did a nice job navigating the thicket of Terrier's defenders. Michelle bullying his way inside and harangued on his way to the rim. So first foul of this one for Torres. Fifth team foul against Bishop Lachlan. So they only have one more before it's free throws for St. Francis Prep. Tyler Michelle, we noted, starting 12 games a year ago. And came up big in big moments. Had a couple of significant shots down the stretch in St. Francis Prep's upset over Cardinal Hayes a season ago. And, and that is exactly what Jimmy Lynch is asking out of his junior this season. At times, Michelle would go to the rim a year ago and would be a little bit too unselfish, would, would be driving with the intent to pass the basketball. They want him to go up in traffic. That time he did, and pays it off with two free throws. The Terriers back up by five. Miles Balbosa into the game, firing a three. Anthony had his steam blocked by Okehi. Can't give Anthony an inch because he will take a mile. Eats up space like no one else on this Terriers roster. Pascarelli and Sanders. Ah, you bet! Another one for Josh Pascarelli. Up to right around 12 points. Led the Catholic League a year ago in that category. Most made threes. Sanders, right back at you. Michelle, it's a three-point party. Three in a row. Back and forth they go here in Fresh Meadows, New York. As Micaiah Moore gets ready to check back in for the Lions. Sanders pushed off his mark. Okay, he losing the ball. How Chen corralling it. Anthony to Pascarelli. Pascarelli, another one! A 9-3 run for the Terriers. Back up by double digits. That ball skimming off the hand of Okehi. Makaya Moore again, this is his season debut. Tragically lost his grandma at the onset of the season. Had to fly back to his native Barbados 
to attend her funeral. So making his debut tonight. Chen, good look. Tic-tac-toe passing, Michelle off the mark. Jeffrey downhill, Euro step, plus the foul. Second old-fashioned three-point play opportunity for Chris Jeffrey in this one. Again, you're watching CHSAA basketball presented by MassPath General. You take a look at the footwork from Jeffrey, the combination of balletic feet and pure power. Jeffrey saw a lot of zone defenses a year ago, spent this whole offseason improving his jumper to ensure that wouldn't be an issue this time around. And this is the Lions side that lost a lot of talent in their own right. Christian for Joe, and a thousand point scorer, or Christian Joe rather, a thousand point scorer now at Trinity Pauling School. Jareem Eason, their star stretch four, now at Monroe College, and perhaps the most talented of them all, Dai Kaba, who transferred to the Patrick School. And, and it was certainly frustrating for Bishop Lachlan, as, as they thought Kaba could have formed a real three-headed monster with Sanders and Jeffrey. Pascarelli looking for his fourth three of the first half. He is automatic. Pascarelli Volcanic on his home floor. Sanders, Raman, he can shoot in his own right, but not that time. Jeffrey chases it down, nearly gives it to Michelle. Bodies flying, Moore has it. Pass knocked away by Chen. Lamont Anderson will give Sanders a breather. And taking a charge from Moore is Hao Chen. Got a big smile on his face. It's the second one that he has taken. It is a staple of this Terriers program. They are an elite defense year in and year out, and that success is built on their willingness across the board to sacrifice their bodies for the greater good. Anthony patient with less than two minutes left in the first half. Pascarelli. Michelle poked away by Jeffrey. Jeffrey lost it but was fouled by Michelle. Fifth team foul against St. Francis Prep. Just the first against Michelle. As McPherson will come on for Aiden Torres. And Osmana Sacco in for his second run for St. Francis. Jeffrey navigating a lot of traffic. Athletic attempt from McPherson cleaned up by Sacco. Michelle has the mismatch. Doesn't try to take advantage of it. Double pump from the freshman Sacco. Jeffrey, a bull in human form, straight to the rim. Soft touch for Chris Jeffrey. Anthony Pascarelli had the height advantage over Lamont Anderson. Not able to pay it off. Ah. 
About a nine second differential between shot clock and game clock. Bishop Lachlan not gonna go for the two for one. Rahman will fire early though and just miss. And now the Terriers can look to earn a double digit lead going into the half. With Chen back into the game, Rahman out. Ball in the ever reliable hands of Veer Anthony. Michelle harassed up top. Four seconds on the clock. Anthony turns the corner, stripped but fouled. So bonus situation, even though there was no shot. A No, they will say it was on the shot, so it is a, a two-shot trip to the line for Veer Anthony. Anthony just a sophomore, but already has standing offers to play college basketball at Robert Morris and at Manhattan. As Jimmy Lynch will empty his bench, not wanting anyone to pick up a foolish foul in the closing two seconds of this half. And back to a game-high 11-point lead for the Terriers. McPherson will throw it in. Gets it to Jeffrey. Jeffrey will fire from past half court. And that'll do it for half number one. The Terriers lead this matchup by 11 points. You get a second opportunity to watch the beauty of Josh Pascarelli's jumper. There's no other way to describe it. The Catholic League's leading three-point shooter from a season ago picking up where he left off. Again, you're watching... CHSAA basketball presented by MassPeth Federal here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. MassPeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that MassPeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. St. Francis Prep prepares young men and women for the world of tomorrow by immersing them in the Franciscan tradition's four golden links, intellectual, social, spiritual, and physical. Facilities that are second to none. Teachers who instruct and inspire. Values of peace, love, and respect for the individual, community, and environment. High school is four years. St. Francis Prep is forever. Hi, I'm Gene Steratore, CBS Rules Analyst and longtime sports official. For the adults watching this video, you grew up in a world where officials, umpires, and referees for youth sports took their place regularly and reliably ahead of game time. Today, unfortunately, it's getting harder and harder to fill those jobs. Videos showing abusive treatment of officials multiply on social media and there have been consequences for the dreadful behavior of players, fans, and coaches. Massive shortages of officials now lead to games being canceled, and the positive effects of athletic competition are at critical risk for this generation and those to come. I'm hoping we all can begin to see youth competition through a different lens, 
Today, mistreatment of officials has become normalized and we are facing an abnormal future where no officials to hire means no games on the schedule. Any call, any decision, any human effect on wins and losses has become subject to not just withering criticism, but physical threats. There's a vicious cycle at work. Fans chase away officials, and there is a smaller pool to draw from, which makes it harder to get quality, well-trained people in position. The entire game suffers. Did you know, according to the National Federation of High Schools, 80% of new officials quit the game after just two seasons because of abusive behavior from the stands and sidelines. This sort of verbal abuse and threatening behavior takes a toll on all officials and makes them leave the game altogether. Did you know from 2018 to 2022, an estimated 50,000 high school referees, roughly 20% have quit. Half of the remaining referee population is at least 50 years old, but young officials are rarely staying more than three years in the job. If the number of officials working contests in all sports doesn't begin to increase, there won't be enough officials to work the games. That means schedules will get cut, teams or even sports might get canceled. In many states, this is already happening. Remember that officials are invested in what they do. Many officials have regular full-time jobs and they're sacrificing time away from their families. Try to demonstrate empathy, put yourself in their position. Think how you would feel about getting yelled at throughout your workday. Yelling and arguing with officials sends the wrong message to young players. According to Play by the Rules Sports Advocacy, it teaches them that it's not okay to make a mistake. They can blame others for their actions. They can disrespect authority figures. And it's okay to be rude and selfish. You know, officials enforce rules, keep competitions fair, and make player safety a priority, allowing youth sports to be a valuable arena for growth. If we can all just work together and be more empathetic to not just the officials, but everyone else in youth, and high school sports. We can then preserve what many of us have embraced about athletics. And you and I know the benefits of sports, right? Let's spread that gratitude and be proud of what we can build and not blind to how it's being torn down. Calling officials cheaters or corrupt, it's not a game. Insulting referees, it's not a game. Threatening officials, it's not a game. Berating young umpires, learning the ropes, it's not a game. Violent language in the stands, not a game. Verbal abuse from the sideline, it's not a game. Screaming at a referee in the parking lot, it's not a game. So what happens now? Your response in the heat of the moment is the only thing you totally control. And we have an experiment for you to try. Simply stated, just cheer for your child or the team you're there to support. Move that desire to lash out to a different place and encourage with outrage. Your child's sporting memory should be about how you helped inspire and not about how you caused embarrassment. Varsity Media is the tri-state area sports leader. We offer an array of services for any team, coach, player, athletic director, and parent. From game film to live streaming, we are available to cover your event anytime, any place. Looking for an enhanced experience? How about a professional broadcast with multiple camera angles, announcers, graphics, and instant replay? Need a highlight reel? We produce individual highlights for college recruiting and team highlight videos for end of season banquets. And when it comes to social media, nobody has you covered better than us. Hype videos, sideline highlights. We can tailor custom videos to make your team stand out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Why waste your time dealing with anyone else? When it comes to sports video, 
Varsity Media stands alone. Contact us at 516-403-2050 or online at varsitymedia.net. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. If you're an event organizer looking for a media company to cover live streaming, action photography, and game video for your event, look no further. Varsity Media travels throughout the Northeast covering weekend tournaments, showcases, and championships. Contact us today to learn about our services and packages at 516-403-2050 or visit us online at varsitymedia.net. For the best action shots and the best angles, look no further than Varsity Media. Our experienced photographers capture your athlete's best moments right from field level. Plus, we offer great keepsakes like bobbleheads, posters, plaques, and prints. For more information about Varsity Media's photography services, contact us at 516-403-2050 or visit us online at varsitymedia.net. Second half about to get underway here at St. Francis Prep High School, a 38 to 27 lead after 16 minutes of play for the Terriers over the Lions. Again, you're watching CHSAA basketball presented by Mass Pet Federal. The story of the first half, the shooting of Josh Pascarelli and a look ahead to our next sportscast on the Varsity Media Sports Network, Christ the King at Cardinal Hayes. Two of the top 30 programs in America Square off, you can check that out December 8th, only on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Excuse me, December 18th on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You know, you, you want to get hyped, you tune in 10 days early. You camp out at your laptop, you build a tent, you, you, have, a, you have an open fire in your apartment, and you just you get ready to go because that is the type of viewership we expect that if you're not there first, are you going to see it? No, you'll be fine. Watch it December 18th. The Terriers lead the Lions by 11. As we noted, Josh Pascarelli just shooting the lights out of the basketball in the first half. Four threes on his way to 14 points. And was also buoyed by Veer Anthony, who earned two free throws in the closing seconds of that first half with a savvy drive, taking advantage of a scrambled Bishop Lachlan defense. And then Chris Jeffrey, the man of note, for the Lions over the first two quarters. Had those two and ones. Ja'Kai Sanders, though, by and large held in check. Just two buckets in that first half. Again, averaged 15 points per game in Catholic League play a year ago. Both of those two have really improved to, or excuse me, have both really worked to improve their jumper. But the Terriers, a good game plan coming in, essentially challenging anyone else on this Lions roster to beat them. Doubling up top. Showing two or showing three at certain points. And at least initially the Bishop Lachlan Lions have not found a response. And the second half starts off with the ball in the hands of Veer Anthony. Knifing in is Michelle. Good set play to open the second half but Michelle off the mark on the lay. Sanders, attack mode. And a third charge taken by Hao Chen. Man, if you want a coach to love you, you take three charges in less than 10 minutes on the floor. So second foul against Ja'Kai Sanders. Chen yet to score, but Jimmy Lynch will absolutely take it. Or, excuse me, he did hit that one flip shot. Michelle working around the Chen screen. Chen veering middle, backdoor attempt. Picked off by De La Rosa. Moore. Oh, what a comeback for Veer Anthony. Charging down the court. 
to deny Lamont Anderson. So different first five to start the second half. Sanders left alone in the corner and he'll shoot three as Pascarelli was over aggressive that time. Another look at that block by Veer Anthony. I mean, whatever box jumps or leg workouts Pascarelli is doing, clearly Veer Anthony on the same program. So just the first foul against Pascarelli. And three shots for Ja'Kai Sanders. It's such a symbiotic relationship between him and Chris Jeffrey, both on the court, but especially during practice where they push each other to new heights. You know, I was getting a, a chance this week to talk to assistant coach Gerard Herbert for Bishop Lachlan. I was saying, you know, who, who, who's the better passer of the two? And he said, it, it, it's hard to tell because they're always kind of claiming that mantle and one of them will throw a cool pass in practice and say, you see that? You see that? And the other one will be like, all right, watch this and then try something even more aud audacious. And that is how you get a whole lot better at the high school level and every level. Pascarelli into the heart of the zone. Patient and scores. There's a certain calm to Pascarelli's game as a senior. Obviously such a talented scorer but he's really taking his time in the early going this season. De La Rosa can't finish over Chen. Wins the ball back, but then stripped by Pascarelli. The go-ahead pass to Moore. Moore on the flyby, and Jeffrey swats it back to Brooklyn. Michelle, too unselfish. Chen, Moore, Euro, Pascarelli, no hesitation, and why would he? His fifth money ball of this game as he is up to 19 points. Lining one up is De La Rosa. Moore ahead of steam. Pascarelli hunting out the tray ball. Long rebound. Moore no hesitation. The Terriers have such a great pace to them. Chen, more easy one. Good off ball work from the sophomore. Nigel Moore, one of the leading scorers at the freshman level in the Catholic League a year ago, just under 20 points per game. And a lot of times with younger players with that kind of skill, they'll be pretty on ball dominant. But you saw the off ball cutting as Jeffrey answered with a nice zero. Now Moore running the floor but good hustle back from De La Rosa to contest and draw the miss. Sanders poked away by Anthony. Pascarelli and Moore running together. Pascarelli, athletic! He just said, I can jump higher than you and there's nothing you can do about it. 21 points for Josh Pascarelli. And a game high 15 point lead for the Terriers. Moore, good patience. Sweet pass from Chris Jeffrey. Anthony downhill. Oh man. Window shopping for Veer Anthony. Sanders nearly lost it. Late pass. Moore blocked by Chen. Moore trying to win it back. Chen got it. How Chen continues to be the defensive MVP for the Terriers. Anthony will shoot two. That's the first of the game against Chris Jeffrey. Anthony out of Whitestone, New York. 
was always a tough player mentally, but this year matching the mental with the physical completely changed his body over the offseason, turned himself as a sophomore into arguably the strongest player on the team, certainly the strongest guard. Pascarelli keeps the ball alive as it's collected by Kamar Pierre. Quick cross, pull up pop, nylon for Chris Jeffrey. Jumper looks smooth, Moore again uncovered. Bishop Lachlan, they're gonna have to fire file a missing persons report on Moore. Jeffrey coast to coast, Pascarelli off his chin. Anthony was looking for the lob, instead finding Michelle. Moore denied by Jeffrey, Jeffrey, has to be his third block already. Sanders, good pace, and will shoot two, baiting Anthony into that foul. Third foul against Veer Anthony, so that is something to watch. You just see the manipulation from Sanders. Start, stop, Go again, reach in, go up and shoot two. That is veteran basketball from the junior. Again, Sanders is going to be more of a shooter this year. But Ed Gonzalez doesn't want him to lose his bread and butter of being one of the strongest guys out there, that ability to just put his head down and get to the rim. So Anthony will sit with those three fouls. And Troy Faison will take his place. Faison, a freshman who also starred on the football team. Coming off a 7.5 rebound game. 6-7 freshmen are not supposed to be taking that shot, but Sacco can do it. Jeffrey, oh, he's met at the summit! Josh Pascarelli. making the Marist coaching staff very happy with their future freshmen. Quick look inside, Sanders lost it. And Tom St. John will say that went off of Bishop Lachlan. Man, oh man, Josh Pascarelli has springs in his shoes. And too physical that time from Faison. Five foot ten freshman out of Springfield Gardens. Committing the foul, his first. Third team foul against St. Francis Prep. Just 2.42 to go in the third quarter. As there was a tie up. Possession arrow will keep ball with the Lions. St. Francis has given up size at a number of spots, but their, or rather Bishop Lachlan has given up size. Their physicality has paid off, though this time throwing it away, Faison coast to coast for his first bucket. Lead back to 15. Sanders dancing, taking contact. As he earns that trip to the charity strike. Second foul against Sacco. The Lions are doing a good job of slowing this game down. That's what you want to do when you're trailing. Not a lot of time on the clock. Get to the line, freeze the game, get closer and closer to that bonus situation. You know, Sanders has, by and large, failed to take advantage at the line. Sanders 0 for 2. Sacco cuts in. Nearly got the banker to go. Second effort. 
Sacco, oh! Using the glass, the freshman. Get some fight in him. Sanders, oh! Close! Just missing on the elevation. McPherson and the harm. Ja'Kai Sanders built different. Looking for a posterization in just his second game of the season. Anthony pops for the wing three. Jeffrey, good patience. And will draw a timeout from Ed Gonzalez in his 13th season leading the Lions. As we told you earlier, comes into this one with 254 wins. Some work to do down by 13 to earn win 255 as we look up at Bishop Lachlan's upcoming schedule, we, we told you the concern inside the Lions program is that they could be looking ahead to that Christ the King game. Hard to tell if that's been the case, but the Terriers certainly proving they're an opponent that should not be overlooked. And then a tough one against Eagle Academy, a public school powerhouse out of Brooklyn. And then a game against Mount St. Michael where we'll see a familiar foe, Caleb Antigua, a, or Antigua rather, six foot eight forward last year for the Lions transferred over to Mount St. Michael, so that'll be interesting. And then they'll get a little bit of a reprieve against Nazareth on December the 16th. That Christ the King game looms large as the Royals got off to a one and one start, but have yet to play a game on American soil. Their first two were at Hoop Hall, London, beating Pace Academy and falling to Paul the Sixth, the powerhouse out of Washington, D.C. And again, you can Tune in for our next Varsity Media Sports Network broad sportscast when Christ the King takes on Cardinal Hayes. Ian Jackson against Brandon Williams. Doesn't get much better than that in New York State. Michelle patient inside. Ball knocked around and recovered by Jeffrey. Jeffrey sling and he's hacked. Second foul against Tyler Michelle. And next foul against the Terriers. The Lions will shoot free throws. Oh, the old off the back trick for Chris Jeffrey. Creative. Home run ball for Anthony. Anthony, a jump stop, but no finish. Raman with Anthony trying to bully him. Lions can get back within single digits on this possession. Jeffrey, that's a tough fade. Bounded by Pascarelli. Up ahead to Moore, Moore to the rim. Crucial four point swing. Ed Gonzalez and Chris Jeffrey likely want that last shot back. Lamont Anderson, head of steam, and Hao Chen draws his fourth charge of this ball game. Second foul of the game against Anderson. What more can you say about Hao Chen? How does he take so many hits? That's the best I've got. Michelle Moore. Terriers will hold for the last shot or will attempt to with the shot clock off. Anthony got free throws in this situation last time. Bullies his way inside, looking for Pascarelli. Well covered by Anderson. Anthony got it back. Chen threw it up. Didn't know how much time was on the clock. Had a couple of seconds to work with. As Troy Faison 
will check in for Anthony. They don't want Anthony picking up a foolish foul already at three. Jacob Wang getting his second stint of this ball game. And Sanders will just hold. So a 13 point lead for the Terriers at the end of three. Bishop Lachlan hoping for a big comeback as we get one last look at Pascarelli proving that man can fly. Again, he was known for his three-point shooting a year ago. A lot more than that now as his Terriers lead it by 13 on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks, know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. Fourth quarter, about to get underway here at St. Francis Prep High School, a 13-point lead over the Bishop Lachlan Lines. Again, St. Francis Prep, one of their better seasons in school history a year ago. We noted already they won the Brooklyn Queens Championship, number one ranked team in New York City for the majority of the season as they dueled with Stepanak for first place in the Catholic League. And... Got a big non-conference win over Modern Day in the Cruel Classic before ultimately losing in the semifinals, 73-62 to against Christ the King. Bishop Lachlan, they play quite a competitive schedule this season. They have a Christmas tournament down in West Palm Beach. They take on DMV Power, DeMatha at... The Hoopal Classic in Springfield, Massachusetts. MLK Weekend, that's always a fun one. And we noted it's, it's going to be a tall task for them to rebound if they can't pull out the victory here with a date against the Royals on Friday. Michelle contested. Well defended that time by Lamont Anderson, or rather by Wilmer De La Rosa. De La Rosa on the other end for what I believe is his first bucket of the game. Had a 14.16 rebound debut. Quiet today, at least so far, against the Terriers. Moore harangued by De La Rosa. Moore beats him off the ball. Michelle, couple fakes. Second chance, Pascarelli, or rather Veer Anthony, extending the advantage. And St. Francis Prep will call a time out of it. 13-point lead, Veer Anthony. He's been physical rebounding the basketball all game long. As we get a look at the Terriers' upcoming schedule, Mount St. Michael on the 9th, Zaverian on the 16th, or Zaverian, excuse me, on December 16th. And then they get their chance at Christ the King December 20th before heading down to Mississippi for the Arby's Classic. Worth noting that game on the 20th, a varsity media sportscast. So if you're going to watch one of them, that is the one to watch. And that Christ the King team, so much talent coming back. Star guard Brandon Williams heading to UCLA a year from now. As many as seven Division I prospects on that team. We're down a bit a year ago. Certainly not the case this season. They are co-favorites with Cardinal Hayes. And of course, Archbishop Stepanak to win the Catholic League. Anderson, quick cross. Pascarelli. On the rebound. Oh. 
tic-tac-toe passing, Anthony collected by Sanders. Lane opens up for Sanders, pull up pop at the foul line. Six and a half to go, 11 point game. Jimmy Lynch wants more pace out of his side. Foul off the ball. Third against Lamont Anderson, 14 foul against Bishop Lachlan. Josh Pascarelli, 21 points, but hasn't scored in a while. About seven minutes now without a bucket. Chen that time harangued by Micaiah Moore. The team fouls now at five for the Lions, starting to become a bit of an issue with six minutes to go. Chen doubled, and another one. The third foul on this possession. So it goes against De La Rosa for his third. And now on the next Bishop Lachlan foul, St. Francis Prep will shoot free throws. Pascarelli nearly had it stripped. Anderson playing in his jersey. Pascarelli starts, stop. Anthony on the board. Offensive rebound so significant in the high school game is you don't have the NBA rule where the shot clock only resets to 14 seconds. It's a, it's a fresh 30. Though Anthony rushing to the rim and the fourth foul on this one possession. And the fourth for Wilmer De La Rosa. So the freshman forward picks up three fouls in about a minute. And Veer Anthony goes to the line looking to continue to build the St. Anthony's advantage. Or rather the St. Francis prep advantage. Though you know if he, if he continues the career he's been having they might rename the school St. Anthony. So De La Rosa will take a seat as Lamond Anderson and Tysir Rahman into the game for Lachlan. Chen creates another chance. Pascarelli, that could be a dagger. Instead, it's Anderson corralling. And this time the foul comes against Tyler Michelle. So it'll be a one and one opportunity for Lamont Anderson. Bishop Lachlan is, is so excited about Anderson. Strong with a tremendous first step. Can guard one through five, can play one through five offensively. Misses a crucial free throw that time though. Ball popping around. Anthony stymies the movement. Pascarelli in the post. Sanders able to hold him off. Rahman thought about the tray. Sanders, no hesitation. Anthony, good idea. Chen, too much mustard on it. He's trying to find more. This game just hasn't felt close since halftime. It's gotten to single digits, but since that opening quarter, there hasn't been a sense that Bishop Lachlan 
is really in it as the Terriers continue to hold them at arm's length. Sanders floating through the air, rattling one home. Nolan Raymond nearly losing it at midcourt. Now does McPherson stripped him. McPherson had more alongside, was looking for the and one instead. Chen bats it out of bounds. He's down in some pain. Hopefully all right as he continues to take hit after hit after hit. Chen will stay down for the time being. So he's going to get looked at by the athletic training staff for the Terriers, and in turn, we will step aside. It's a nine-point game coming down to the wire here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Masmouth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks, know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. Again, you are watching CHSAA Basketball presented by Maspeth Federal. Here on the Varsity Media Sports Network, Hao Chen helped off the court. Just a sophomore, part of an extremely young St. Francis prep team. Again, Chen is a sophomore, Moore a sophomore, Anthony a sophomore, Michelle just a junior, Faison a freshman, Sacco a freshman, pretty much every key piece outside of Pascarelli. Coming back next season as Micaiah Moore puts in the bunny. And the quick timeout this time called by the Lions. As Ed Gonzalez, the All Hollows High School graduate in 1981, leads the huddle. He coached at his alma mater from 2003 to 2007 before taking over at Bishop Lachlan in 2009. Again, 254 career wins, ranks fifth amongst active CHSAA coaches. And remember, while you're here, you might as well subscribe. All you have to do is click the little subscribe button if you're not in full screen mode. Exit out of full screen, then hit subscribe. It's right, right under the little screen where you're watching. Or you go to YouTube.com slash Varsity Media. And please do follow us on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, maybe a TikTok one day. Who knows? Who's to say? As the Lions are as close as they've been in this fourth quarter, down by just seven. And it's thanks to an improved effort defensively, some of the three-point shots that were falling like rain for St. Francis Prep, rimming out. Could still use a bump from each of Ja'Kai Sanders and Chris Jeffrey as those two have failed to make a significant impact in the second half. I mean, you could certainly credit the job Pascarelli and, and Anthony are doing defensively. But that improved shot making from the duo. This would be a good time to showcase it. As the ball will be inbounded by De La Rosa and the Lions come out showing a full court press. Into Sacco, Sacco patient with the basketball. Trying to break it is Michelle. Michelle, the offensive foul, pushing off thanks to some fantastic defense from Ja'Kai Sanders. As the call was made by Steve Rassiter. And back into the game for Bishop Lachlan is Chris Jeffrey taking a seat, Lamont Anderson. Final three and a half minutes here in Fresh Meadows. The Lions looking to complete a big time comeback. We're down by as many as 17. McPherson. Head down. 
flying layup is good. Five point ball game. Pascarelli on the come up. Ball doubled out of his hands. Moore tripped as he was trying to cut. So the foul will go against Tysir Rahman and it'll be a one and one opportunity for Nigel Moore. Nigel Moore has really impressed me with how he's retrofitted his game to fit around Vera Anthony and Josh Pascarelli. Again, you come off of JV, your 20-point scorer. It would be easy to be score first, score second, score third. Moore has turned himself into a very complete player. But can't hit that time, so a golden opportunity for Ja'Kai Sanders, who has it swatted by Moore. Out of bounds and possession back to the Terriers. As Lamont Anderson will come on. And taking a seat is Micaiah Moore, who has failed to make much of an impact in his first game of the season. Anthony, back to Michelle. Moore patient, no look. Oh, a magic trick from Nigel Moore. And Tyler Michelle paid it off. Lead back to seven. Jeffrey calling for the screen from McPherson. Back on the court is Hao Chen. Burrowing his way to the basket and finishing with ease is Jeffrey. Moore, fly by to the rim, will shoot two. You could tell Rahman last second was trying to pull off, but knew he was trailing on the play and, and was doing anything possible to impact Nigel Moore. Moore had a 14 point high school debut against Stevenson. Such a multifaceted scorer for a young player and According to Jimmy Lynch, the next great guard that they have on the horizon, obviously, Vera Anthony made waves a year ago, making varsity as a freshman. Before him, Josh Pascarelli. Before him, Latik Briscoe, and on and on and on. Under Jimmy Lynch. More the next guy with that college upside. Trying to get the lead back to seven with 2.07 to go. Stays at six. Jeffrey doesn't have the touch. Ball up for grabs. Jeffrey got it. No need to rush. Sanders shakes Anthony. Sanders a hop, skip, and a jump. But Nigel Moore was the last man touching the basketball as Sanders was looking for an ex explanation from Steve Rassiter that time for why that wasn't a foul, perhaps just an incidental tripping there. I, I like the way Ja'Kai Sanders went about that, though. Very respectful, wasn't yelling, just said, hey, why, why wasn't that a call? And that's how you can really help yourself with officials. So Chris Jeffrey to inbound. No one open. Pass deflected. Strong hands by Moore to recover. Raman, Sanders. Sanders hit. So he'll have a one and one. But worth noting, Ja'Kai Sanders has been pretty iffy from the line in this ballgame. Has missed four or five just since the start of the second quarter. Just under 100 seconds to go. Got to make the first to earn the second. 
the third team all CHSAA performer from a year ago. Money on the first. Sanders two for two. And the Lions are as close as they've been since early in the second quarter. Inbound to Moore. Raman applying pressure. Moore shaking him. Moore jump to pass. That is not what you want to do. A sophomore mistake from Nigel Moore. Predetermining his read. Got covered up, and Nigel Moore threw it away. Bishop Lachlan, a chance to make it a one possession game. Ball in the hands of Chris Jeffrey. Jeffrey navigating the double screen. Rahman forced one up, had it blocked by Moore. Pascarelli harassed and fouled. And there was no need for that if you're Bryce McPherson. There's 73 seconds on the clock. You can pressure the basketball, but you absolutely do not want to foul in that situation. So now in the double bonus, the free two shots for Josh Pascarelli. And if you're Bishop Lachlan, you don't have to go for the three, even if Pascarelli makes this. Still plenty of time for the quick two. Lead back to six. Jeffrey ultra deceptive with the basketball. Raman will try the rainbow tray, airmailed it. Pascarelli got the board. And now you have to think about fouling with 30 seconds on the shot clock. But you do not want to foul that man. The Terriers call for time. We'll step aside as well. Six point game, high drama here in Queens when we return. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. St. Francis Prep prepares young men and women for the world of tomorrow by immersing them in the Franciscan tradition's four golden links, intellectual, social, spiritual, and physical. Facilities that are second to none. Teachers who instruct and inspire. Values of peace, love, and respect for the individual, community, and environment. High school is four years. St. Francis Prep is forever. Fifty-four seconds to go. Six-point lead for the Terriers over the Lions in a matchup of two of the best teams in New York State from a season ago. If you're Bishop Lachlan, you want the ball out of Josh Pascarelli's hands. You do not want to be fouling him. I wonder if they send to his direction. Maybe don't put a man on the inbounder. Just anything possible to not let the sweet shooting senior, the Maris commit, get a touch here. Anthony will send it in. The screen comes for Pascarelli. No switch. So Pascarelli had it knocked away. It's Anderson on the steal. Dodges Pascarelli and finishes with the left hand. Four point game. And now Bishop Lachlan will take time. So they baited Veer Anthony. The sophomore very rarely makes mistakes, especially at crucial points in the ball game. But Lamont Anderson at six foot three with those long arms, a glue guy for the Bishop Lachlan Lions. They showed off some nice craft on that layup too. Good patience around the rim. I got so far to use a World Cup term. It, it was quality. And now if you're Bishop Lachlan, the 
the calculus is a little different, but not so much. Four-point game, 35 seconds on the shot clock. So you let this thing go all the way down. You get the ball back. You still need to score twice. You're going to have to foul at some point. So presumably, if this ball gets in cleanly, you're fouling right away. That being said, I would still not foul Josh Pascarelli under any circumstances. The guy is automatic. And you know he's going to be the target again on the inbound. Anderson doing a fantastic job defensively that time. So substitution for Bishop Lachlan is Aiden Torres, who played right around two and a half minutes in that first half, will come in for defense. Rocking the Rex Specs. A look as old as time. Anthony into Pascarelli. So Bishop Lachlan not looking to foul right away. They'll go for the steal first. Now the double comes towards Pascarelli. Gives it early to Anthony. And did Anthony commit an offensive foul? No. They're saying Ja'Kai Sanders crowded him. A little bit of a surprising call that time from Arthur Walker. Let's, let's get another look at it. Sanders just didn't give him any room. Right in his airspace. And Anthony doing a good job to bait the foul, though. A little bit risky on that swing through. Could have gone the other way. As Anthony cashes in the first. Five-point game, but Pascarelli got the board. Now they have to foul Pascarelli, and that could do it. Bishop Lachlan not boxing out and paying for it. St. Francis relatively undersized, but they have been the better team on the glass throughout this ball game. And in a crucial moment, they get another one, though. Pascarelli missing the first. Cracks open the window just a little bit for Bishop Lachlan. So now it's Micaiah Moore into the ball game as Ed Gonzalez looks to ensure that rebounding mishap doesn't happen again. Hard box out this time, no need. Pascarelli swishes it. Going fast with the basketball is Sanders. Sanders nearly lost it. Anthony applying pressure. Sanders pulling out his do-it-yourself kit. Start and stop in the lane. And a contested triple falling down on the shot was Aiden Torres. Go ahead pass to Chen who will hold on to the ball. With 20 seconds left, now 16 and a half, he's fouled. And that might just be the ball game as Ed Gonzalez is not irate, but bemused by that lack of call. Aiden Torres took a spill. Did not get the three free throws. Torres, one of the two best pure shooters on this Bishop Lachlan roster. Certainly not someone you mind taking that shot in this situation, but it also was his first attempt of the game. And, and that's been a theme in this final minute for the Lions. They have not been able to get the ball in the hands, at least in position to shoot it for their best players. So now an eight-point game, 16 and a half to go. Timeout taken by Bishop Lachlan. We'll step aside as well. The Lions look for a miracle when we return. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. Eight point lead for the Terriers of St. Francis Prep over the Bishop Lachlan Lions. Bishop Lachlan came into this game looking to get revenge for the 21 point drubbing the Terriers delivered in that Brooklyn Queens championship game a year ago. Despite the losses of some crucial pieces for St. Francis Prep, they have been unable to do so. 
Still time, 15 on the clock. Sanders, Jeffrey has to fire from range, in and out. Moore tips it around, tie up, second chance, and one for Bryce McPherson. And Jimmy Lynch has to be frustrated. That is the only thing you can't do in that situation. <laughs> Though I, I like his style of leadership. Instead of ripping into Vera Anthony, he'd be like, hey, don't do that. <laughs> Give him a pat on the head. I mean, both, both these coaches, you get a chance to talk to them. Just fantastic human beings. Could not be nicer. So five seconds on the clock. Trying to make it a five-point game. Off the mark is McPherson. Tie up. Possession arrow favors Bishop Lachlan. So a little bit of late interest here. As Tysi Rahman will check in for McPherson. Here, Bishop Lachlan, it has to be a catch and shoot situation because you need two three pointers. Rahman was open. They didn't get it to him. Sanders tied up. Sanders, a late pass, a late shot. Will not count. Doesn't matter. Six point win for St. Francis Prep as they get the first victory and what will likely be a couple of matchups between these two teams on this season. Both favorites once again in the Brooklyn Queens side of Catholic Division play. And the Terriers set a tone saying, hey, we might not have our two first team all-leaguers in Latique Briscoe and Jaden Daughtry, but Josh Pascarelli is playing like he's going to make one of those teams this season for Bishop Lachlan. A learning experience and one that was necessary as they get a premier matchup with Christ the King on Friday. For our entire crew, led by our fantastic producer Chris Sweeney and our star cameraman Angelo Kaiizo. I'm gonna he's, I'm gonna get an earful for that. I probably said that wrong. Ben Turch and our executive producer, I'm Gavin Schultz, signing off here from Fresh Meadows, New York, on the Varsity Media Sports Network. <laughs>